Lal Path Labs is the next corporate we're tracking today. Uh, this entire space has been through so much competition. It's been through some wealth erosion as well on the markets. Uh, the non-COVID revenue, though, has seen a good growth, both sequentially and year-on-year. -year. Realizations have also seen a steady growth. Om Manchanda, the managing director of Dr. Lal Path Labs, joins us now to discuss their business momentum. Uh, Mr. Manchanda, it's always great speaking to you because apart from your own business, you give us a pretty good sense of how things are on the ground. So I want to start with that, right? I mean, there is so much competition nowadays in this space uh, because of not just, uh, you know, brick and mortar companies, but also health tech has become the new buzzword. Uh, there's so much funding that's coming through as well. Uh, I want to understand from you how the situation is on the ground for a company like yours. And uh, what is, you, you know, do you think that there could be some more pressure before things pick up? Uh, good morning, uh... I think you interesting question that you ask. Uh, in my view, there's nothing called health tech versus uh, traditional business model. I think they are both together. Uh, the technology piece is basically the enabler in uh, you know improving the service levels to our customers. So I think the legacy companies or incumbents actually they have caught up quite a bit on the technology side. So I think we are as good as any other new age player. Uh, our teams have done a wonderful job. I think that's true for the entire industry. So to my mind, it's a, it's more like a hybrid sort of a situation where uh, the new age companies have to move offline and offline companies have to actually adopt online as well. So I think today we have a situation where most of the large players are actually hybrid format. And I think the second part of your comment essentially was how how is the competition shaping up? And I think, uh, in my view, the diagnostics so far has been a pretty much very large city urban phenomena. And I, I think the second phase for this, uh, this industry growth is going to come from down the pop strata, which is basically moving to tier three, tier four towns. So I think mm -hmm. this industry will definitely have a long runway. Okay. Uh, so that's on the health tech side. Got it. But even hospitals, right? Hospitals are getting very aggressive now in terms of testing, diagnostics, etc. Is that a big hindrance to growth for you? I think it's fairly natural for any any health uh, player to figure out is that which are the adjacencies for them. I think it's very natural for hospitals to see that how they can capture the sort of a diagnostics business, especially flowing out of OPD in their nearby catchment areas. Uh, but I've always believed that uh, you know expanding beyond that is a different business altogether. Uh, it's a highly logistics-driven business, which in my view, some of these players may not be used to that kind of operations. And I think the biggest challenge that I would see in hospital business is the pricing inside the hospital is very, very different than what retail pathology is all about. I think we are yet to see that conflict or the friction that is going to exist between outside and inside business because many of these players have not yet scaled up to that level where the conflict uh, becomes visible. Okay. Uh... Good point, Doctor. Thanks so much for speaking to us here. You know, there are two variables that we look at normally, you know, the volumes as well as on pricing. So have you managed to push through any kind of price increases? And for the year, that's for FI24, what kind of volume growth are you uh, guiding for? If you recall, we took price increase in the month of February, which, which essentially belonged to the previous financial year. And we are seeing some impact of that. I think we've already mentioned about 2 to 3% of our top line growth, or revenue growth is on account of price uh, increase. And uh, we usually uh, are not very regular in price increases. This increase also we took after many years. So uh, I think we'll wait and watch as to how it moves. On the volume front, I think the current quarter is generally uh, the highest quarter in the industry because of fever season. And we are seeing some gradual pickup on volume as well. Mm, not the best thing to hear, but, uh, you know, in terms of fever season. But good to know that volumes at least are going up. Uh, Swash yeah. breath, you know, that one has been doing very, very well. And that's been a big growth driver, right, for you? You're already clocking more than 100 crores on a quarterly basis. I think you're guiding for closer around 500 crores. What's the ideal contribution you're looking at from this particular vertical? And how do you see it scaling up from here on? I think this is one sort of a change uh, in consumer behavior that I've noticed, especially during mm. and post-COVID times. And uh, uh, test sort of prescription pattern is moving towards bundle tests. And I think that is seen not only by us, but I think entire industry. So, which is a, in some way, it's a great use for all stakeholders because uh, patients, first of all, uh, get great value for money because if you look at price per test, it's much, much lower than ordering individual tests. So, I do see that contribution from bundle tests will continue to go up. For us, it has done very well. And as you rightly mentioned, we are now clocking exit rate of between 
Humor me and uh, would love your response. August has been very dry, right? Across, uh, uh, there have been some uh, uh, sort of states which have been exceptionally uh, dry. And this is a season where, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, b- because of uh, rainfall, etc., uh, hospitals, and I don't know about diagnostic chains, but I remember hospitals have told us that this is the busy season for them. Uh, but because uh, August is dry and the forecast for September also perhaps is not uh, uh, very good, uh, maybe you, you will see <clears throat> a slight drop off. I mean, can we make that kind of same leap for diagnostic companies as well, like you? Yeah, I think the monsoon pattern has been very unusual. Uh, we saw very heavy rain, I think late June and early July. And after that, it's been dry. And probably I, I'm probably not in a position to really comment on this, how September would pan out. Uh, mm-hmm. My sense is this, it's a combination of uh, humidity and the temperature and many other things. Uh, probably, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a medical medical person, so probably I won't be able to comment how the trajectory of disease pattern would be. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think September is a very important mon- month for us to watch out. This uh, seasonal business, uh, I mean, I'm assuming comes at a bit of a higher margin as well. At least for hospitals, it does. I mean, is that true for you as well? Uh, it's it's essentially because of leverage, uh, because uh, uh, you, you don't have increase in cost, but you have a higher revenue. And in our business... Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about hospitals in our business, variable costs are very low, like region costs is just about 20-25%. So most of the higher increase in revenue just flows through the bottom line. That's what happens. Hmm. Uh, what about the suburban business, uh, You know, suburban diagnostics? The volume growth has been on the uh, slightly on the muted side. Uh, I think in Q1, there was not too much volume growth, but the margins have been slightly steady. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of growth are you looking at over there? Uh, on suburban, we've actually just entered into phase two of our integration where we are trying to look at synergy between the parent company as well as the suburban diagnostics. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are looking at both synergy on the, on the front end as well. Uh, uh, we have been a little more active on, on the ground in terms of marketing initiatives in the last couple of months and mm-hmm. also trying to see if we can collapse the testing between the two companies and see that uh, there's a cost advantage. I think early days yet, but I'm fairly confident that suburban as an asset would do very well for us. Uh, you know, just coming back to the earlier answer uh, to Nigel's question on pricing, right? Uh, you spoke about that, but I think there, it, it begs a little more understanding because of what's happening in the industry. I mean, there's a steep pricing action that we've seen from NetMeds, for example. They are trying to strengthen their presence in in uh, this whole Delhi NCR region. And that escalates a threat for a company like yours. I mean, it's sort of like become like a battlefield, this entire diagnostic space now. I'm sure it's not been easy for incumbent players like yourself. But uh, on pricing itself, do you think things could be tricky for a while? Uh, not really. See, I've been long enough in this industry. I think one thing one, one must realize that healthcare is a very, very trust-driven space. Uh, it's not that you and I go to a doctor or a hospital or somebody else just because of the lowest price. Uh, but I do agree that you can't be outpriced as well. So I think there's, there's a, you just need to figure out is that what is the kind of premium you can charge uh, over your nearest competitor. And this industry also, you will see that if you go deeper, you will not see a national pricing. So you will not see a price, what you see in one city A and then same price in city B. Uh, in my mind, I think what is very, very important is to focus on that you continue to deliver on your core proposition, which is just just the quality and people should trust in the reports that you deliver. I think the rest will follow because if you run the company efficiently, you always have the ability to price it well. Yes, I think we've, in the past we've faced competition, uh, which has been on a cash burn and deep discounting. I think many of those players, they know that they can't sustain it. They are going to catch up with us. But I think in my mantra, is just focus on quality and run the company efficiently. You are then, you will be able to price it uh, well. All right, final question before we let you go then. Uh, you know, you're sitting on some cash and uh, inorganic growth is something that the street expects for the sector on the whole. Are you all on the prowl? And could we expect some kind of a closure of any deal, say, in the next couple of quarters? Yes, I think uh, time and again I mentioned that uh, growth pillars for us are both inorganic and, and inorganic. And if you now look at the sort of a distribution pattern of our business, I think you plug the gap of best to some extent. 
uh, south does exist as a gap area for us. We will continue to look for uh, uh, sort of a great sort of asset. Uh, to my mind, uh, I think right now I have nothing to share, uh, but uh, but it's a stated strategy for us to go in organic as well. And we will definitely use our internal accruals to take that forward. All right, uh, Mr. Manchandra, it's always great speaking with you, more to understand what's happening in the industry and uh, you know, it's a pleasant conversation that we have. Thanks a lot for joining in and speaking to CNBC TV 18. That's Dr. Lal Patlabs talking about all things diagnostic, their own business and of course competition in this space which has picked up drastically over the last one year. Let's